Today in this video, we will see more about how to use Blender denoisers. You know, in the previous video, we learned about the use of Open Image, NLM, and Optics denoisers and their variations. In this video, we are going to learn how to denoise a scene using both Open Image and NLM denoisers. If you watched the previous video about these denoisers, you can understand why we need to denoise using both denoisers. So, the first part of this video compares these two denoisers and explains why these two denoisers should be used together. Then in the second part, we will see how to use these two denoisers together. Then in the final sections, we will look at how to use this process further. This is the scene we are going to use for this denoising. You can download the required Blender file through the link in the video description below. You can see there are three objects here. This first object was created using Blender Particles hair settings. The second and third objects are diffuse and glass materials with a 0.5 roughness. Here, first, we take the render results of both denoisers and then we compare both results. So, let's render this scene here using Open Image Denoise first. We currently use 32 render samples for this and enable adaptive sampling here. Now render the scene. Here is the render result of Open Image Denoise. Okay, now let's render this using the NLM Denoise. Let us select a second slot for this. Now select NLM for the denoiser here. We will use adaptive sampling and 32 samples for this rendering as before. And OK, now let's render this scene. Here is the render result of NLM Denoise. When we compare these render results, the sphere with the glass material is properly denoised through the open image denoise. And this cube with diffuse material gives approximately the same result in both denoisers, in this 32 samples. This hairy sphere is properly rendered through the NLM denoise. The open image denoiser usually misses a bit of detail when rendering such high detailed objects. The details of the open image denoiser depend on the resolution of the rendering scene. As the resolution increases, so does the ability to capture information in the open image denoise. Thus, we know that NLM denoiser can render high detailed objects in the right way. All the objects in our scene except this hairy sphere were properly rendered through the open image denoise. Okay, we just got a rough idea of how these objects are rendered through NLM and open image denoisers. Accordingly, let us now divide these objects into two categories. One for open image denoise and the other for NLM denoise. In addition to these three objects in our scene, there are two more mesh planes. According to the previous render result, all objects except this hairy sphere were rendered properly through the open image denoiser. So, first, select all the objects except this hairy sphere here and move to a new collection called open image denoise. After that, move this hairy sphere to a collection called NLM Denoise. Now we have shared all the objects in this project for these denoisers as needed. Blender cannot render a scene using two render denoisers. But Blender can render two scenes in the same Blender project using different denoisers. Let's see how to do this by creating relevant scenes. Now we need to create a similar scene from this scene. We can do this by duplicating the scene. Before doing this, let us give all the render settings required to render the scene normally. For now, let's not set any denoiser for this scene. Here, we used the adaptive sampling option for this scene earlier. Leave this option as it is. Also, set the tile size as required for your CPU or GPU. Generally, the tile size for the CPU is 32 pixels. OK, now let's duplicate this scene for these denoisers. You can do this using the main toolbar at the top. 
And this is the scene we are in now. So, now create a linked scene. And rename one scene as NLM de noise, and the other is open image de noise. By making a scene copy, we can give different settings related to each scene. This means that there are separate render, output, view layer, scene, and world properties for this scene. And the compositor also exists separately from scene to scene. Here, we use the linked scene copy. The reason we use this is that we need the connection between the objects in these scenes. All we need here is to use a separate denoiser for these two scenes. And this is the brief overview of how scenes change from one to another. Now select the NLM denoise scene and adjust its settings. First, let's switch the viewport to render view. Here we are doing NLM denoise only for this hairy sphere. For this, we need to separate this object from all the other objects in the scene. We can do this using the holdout restriction toggle. Using this toggle, you can transform the objects in a relevant collection into a mask. So, now enable this restriction toggle through the filter and outliner. All we need in this NLM scene is this hairy sphere. So, let's turn all the remaining objects into a mask. Because of this holdout thing, we have already separated the objects related to these denoisers into collections. So, now hold out the open image denoise collection. After the holdout, now only the object for NLM denoise is shown here. But the background here is filled with black color. We need this with a transparent background. So, enable the transparent option under the film option dropdown in render properties. Now, let us select the required denoiser for this scene. Then, set the required number of samples for this. And here keep the same number of 32 render samples that we previously set for this. Ok, now let's adjust settings for the open image denoise scene. So, first, select the open image scene from the scenes dropdown. In this scene, we need all the objects except this hairy sphere to appear here. So, let's hold out the NLM denoise object collection. Here also you can enable the film transparent option. But it is not necessary to remove this part here, due to the alpha overlaying of the NLM denoised scene on this scene. And it is also not necessary to hold out this section. The reason for this will be explained to you in the last part of this video. So, follow the steps mentioned in the video for now. For this scene, set 8 render samples, and you can use 16 or 32 if you like. Now select open image denoising for render denoise. We learned earlier in the video about denoising, how to do open image denoising through compositor, and this is faster than the normal way. So, disable the render denoise option here. And we will set this denoiser in the compositing part. Right now, we have created two scenes for the two denoisers as we want. And separated the objects for each scene, and set the denoiser for both scenes. Now, these scenes need to be rendered. But it is difficult to do this with the normal render method of the blender. If this is done in the normal way, you need to render the NLM scene first, and take its image output. Then render the open image scene and take the image output and edit the two images to get the final output. This should be done manually in the normal way. Also rendering an animation using this method is a very difficult task. You have to do this frame by frame in an animation. But we can do this very easily using a root scene. Let us first get an overview of how to use a root scene. In addition to these two scenes, take a new empty scene and use the compositor of that root scene to access and render these NLM and open image denoising scenes. This is what happens in a root scene. Ok, now let's make that scene here. For that, create a new empty scene and rename it as root. You do not need to use the same names we use here. So, you can rename these scenes with any name you like. In this root scene, you can see that there are no objects in the viewport. 
We only use this scene for compositing. So, we do not need the viewport of this scene at all. After creating the scene here, now change this viewport to compositor. Now enable the use nodes here. After that, now duplicate this render layer. And set the open image scene to one and the NLM scene to the other. Then connect the two scene layers using the alpha over node. Connect these scene layers to the alpha over node in the order shown here. OK, let's set open image to noising here. First, select the open image scene and enable the denoising render pass in the view layer properties. After that, go to the root scene and select the open image render layer. Here, denoising render passes should be shown, but nothing is shown here. To get this, click the view layers drop down at the bottom of the render layer and select the view layer. Now, this shows render passes. After doing that, add the denoiser node and connect it to this render layer. Let's render this. You can do this using the F12 hotkey. Right now, this starts to render the open image scene. Now this renders the NLM scene. Now, this on the compositing part. After rendering, now close this render result and go to the compositor, enable its backdrop feature, and set viewer node to output here. You can see how this scene is rendered through NLM and open image denoising. This is the result given by the open image denoise and the result given by the NLM denoise. You can see the difference. We have already seen the ability of these denoisers to capture details, and now we know what kind of objects should be presented through these denoisers. We said earlier that these render layers should be connected to the alpha over node in this order. This is because the NLM denoising scene we rendered here is an image with transparent details. But the open image scene is not like that, as we avoid using holdout and film transparent for this, we get the image here without any transparent details required for this scene. This is why we said to connect these render layers in one order for this alpha over layer. That is, the scene with transparent details should be alpha over the scene without transparent details. When rendering animations using this method, the timeline of the root scene acts as the timeline of these two denoise scenes. Also, it is advisable to use holdout and film transparent in both scenes for animations. OK, now let's see how to speed up this rendering process. We can render the relevant scene separately using this render button in the render layers. This allows us to render the desired render layer separately and compositing it with the previously rendered layers. You know there is only one object for the NLM scene here, but it also takes some time to render the transparent area of the render layer. Let's see how to avoid this part from rendering. To do this, select the NLM scene and go to the viewport. Let's switch to camera view here and set the render border for this NLM object. Set this with a little more space than the size of the object. After that, now go to the compositor in the root scene and click on the render button in the NLM render layer. It has now begun to render and now only renders the area provided by the render border. This can only be done for rendering a still image, that is, for rendering scenes without animation. Now if you want, you can increase or decrease the render sample size of the open image scene and render only that scene again.
you know we did not use hold out and film transparent options for this open image scene. Let's see what is the reason for this. So, now let's enable this hold out and film transparent for open image scene. Let's render this right now. To render this, select the open image render layer in the root scene and render it only. This is a scene rendered without using a holdout for the background scene. And this is a scene rendered using holdout. You can see the difference between the two. There is a slight variation in the details around the hairy sphere. There is not much difference here, but it may help Blender users who place a lot of importance on render details during rendering. So, use the method that is most convenient for you. Using this method, you now know to render any scene through two rendered denoisers. According to the objects we used here, there was only one object for the NLM denoiser. But there may be several objects in another scene that you are using. So, always use these two options, unless the holdout and film transparent make a big difference to those objects. We talked about a lot of things in this video today. I hope this helps to further speed up your rendering and capture the details in the right way. I hope you have learned something new from this video. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to watch more videos like this, subscribe to our channel, click on the bell icon on the side, and select all. This will allow you to receive notifications for future uploads. If this video helps your Blender work in any way, don't forget to comment on how. If you have any other issues with this video, please comment as well. And if you would like to support us, please share this video with the Blender users you know. Learn with IBM.